Welcome. In this session on natural deduction, we'll consider parse trees. Let's begin by recalling a well-formed formula. Something is a well-formed formula if it's an atom, or if phi is a well-formed formula and C is a well-formed formula. Something is a well-formed formula if it is the negation of a formula, if it is the conjunction of two well-formed formulas, if it is the disjunction of two well-formed formulas, or if it is the material implication of two well-formed formulas. Suppose that we have a formula which is not P and Q implies P and Q or not R. This is a formula, but it's not a well-formed formula. To make it into a well-formed formula, we need to introduce all of the relevant parentheses and not take into account the bindings that we've been using in other sessions. So as a well-formed formula, this would be the negation of P and Q implies P and the disjunction of the negation of R. And now I close the conjunction, I close the disjunction, and I close the entire formula. One of the ways that we can pictorially represent a well-formed formula is a parse tree. We've been informally using parse trees in other sessions where we're asking ourselves, for example, what is the overall structure of a conclusion or a goal formula in a proof? Now we can say that this is a tree. So a tree is a structure in discrete mathematics that has nodes and edges. And here the nodes are either the atoms or the operators and the, uh, the edges are the operands of each operator. Here, the overall structure of this is implication. And to write its parse tree, we would put down implication. There are two edges coming from this corresponding to the antecedent and the consequent. The antecedent will be here. And as a human, when I look at this, I see this is possibly going to require a little more space. So I'll leave a little more space. The antecedent has the structure of a conjunction. And so the node would be the operator. And there are two leaves. There are two subgraphs. Here, the left conjunct is a, an operator, and I can see that because it's got parentheses around it. And so I can write the operator, in this case, is negation, and I know that negation has only one operand. I now have to fill this in. Um, let's proceed uh, by a, a left to right. So here, the um, operand of the negation operator is the atom P, and so P becomes a leaf. For the right conjunct, it's also a leaf at a different level of the tree, and that is the atom Q. If we now go to the consequent, the consequent has the structure of conjunction. So we can put conjunction there. The left conjunct is the atom P. The right conjunct 
has the structure of, oh, uh, that's supposed to be disjunction here, has the structure of disjunction. The left disjunct is the atom Q, and the right disjunct, because it's a parenthesis, is an operator, and the operator in this case is negation, and we know that negation has one operand, which in this case is the atom R. So from this parse tree, we have we have a mapping between these. For every well-formed formula, there is a parse tree. And for every well-formed parse tree, there is a well-formed formula. From the parse tree, we can make certain inferences. For example, we can say that there is one, two, three, four. There are five levels to this parse tree. It may not be immediately apparent from this formula how many levels there are. So we can go in between parse trees and well-formed formulas. There are other ways to develop the parse tree. There, is, there are some strict ways um, involving going from the, um, from the uh, atoms upward. And all, all of this relates eventually to computer science. Because in computer science, a language is parsed. And this parsing of a computer language corresponds exactly to the kind of parsing that we have to do for a well-formed formula.